Ah, see these little devices right here? They can change your life as a biomed. Make your day go a lot smoother than what it normally would have to go if you had to type everything in. We're going to cover barcode scanners. Not the most exciting topic, but I guarantee if you listen to what I got to say, it might change the way you do business and make your life a little bit easier. Coming up next, right here on Better Biomed. Guys, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today, I'm going to cover kind of a generic topic, but it's this is going to be a really important one because as biomeds in medical, you're going to be inundated with barcode scanners. Either you're going to have them on medical equipment, you're going to have them at nursing stations. They are going to be absolutely everywhere. And here's the key. They can be very expensive or the price is coming down. They can be rather inexpensive if you know what to look for. But anyway, guys, there are barcode scanners absolutely everywhere. And here's the key is barcode scanners come in different types. So you have to know what you want to scan. And once you know what you want to scan, then you can figure out which one is going to meet your needs. And if you don't have one available, you might be able to make one available because some medical equipment barcode scanners are programmed and we can deprogram them so that they can read all types of barcodes. We're going to go over that. But anyway, let's start off at the basics. Okay. The absolute very basics here. I've got my laptop and I've got it here just so I have a power source so I can demonstrate what is going on with these barcode scanners. So this one here, this is going to be a traditional one dimensional barcode, barcode scanner. I know barcodes. Anyway, a one dimensional barcode, as you can see here, is just a regular barcode. You can see one right there. See that? And if you see, this is called a laser scanner barcode because what it does is it takes a laser and there's a little mirror that vibrates back and forth an extremely high frequency. And that produces this fine line. You can see it right there. So here's the key to these type of barcode scanners. The barcode has to be horizontal to the beam or else it will not read. Hear that? That, yeah, see? So you heard two beeps there. One beep registered that, hey, I found a barcode and the e means I have nowhere to send it, okay? Because my laptop is still off. You can see that, but it powers the barcode scanner. So the beeps on a barcode scanner actually tell you a lot about what's going on with it. So a beep registers that, hey, I register this, in, you know, according to my barcode library. And the barcode library is something that you can create or register your device with something called a barcode programming library. And your programming library is going to be a whole bunch of specifics to your model or your manufacturer type of barcode scanner. This here being a traditional one dimensional barcode scanner with just a, a laser line, all these programming sheets are gonna work for this type of thing, okay? So this is the most generic, cheapest, oldest technology. These ones are going out of style. If you can replace these, I would because this one here is not able to do two-dimensional barcodes. See that? That's a QR code. And believe it or not, many, many things are starting to use QR type codes to identify themselves. And here's the big thing about QR codes. See how my laser scanner will not pick it up? This is a two-dimensional, which means either the X or the Y axis can read it. This guy can't do it. All right, so that's this guy here. This is a laser scanning barcode scanner, okay? The next type of barcode scanner that we have is called the CCD scanner, okay? And it is a charge coupled device and it uses an array. Oh, Hold on, there we go. It uses an array to pick up X and Y. So it doesn't just pick up linear, it picks up X and Y. And you see, as I pull the trigger, you can see an aiming dot. And then surrounding the aiming dot is the array. You see that? It's, it's a whole pattern of lasers that can pick stuff up. And here, watch this. It registers it. I can register it upside down. I can register it right side up. It doesn't matter. 
because it's an X and Y two-dimensional barcode scan. So that's a CCD model. Now this one is slightly different. You can see that there is still a laser that's scanning because the dot is, is vibrating. This is just one piece of a technology, okay? I have another one here, which is also a CCD scanner, but you will notice that this guy is different. So notice that it, it's got the red that is all around, but at the same time, it's got a line, okay? So the line is like an aiming line, but at the same time, it can register two, two dimensions. You see that? So this is also a CCD scanner, but it has an aiming line instead of an aiming dot. This is probably an older technology than the aiming dot, but let's press on. So that is your two dimension. That is your one dimension. Now, what you are gonna do is when you get a barcode scanner, you're gonna use your programming library to set it up. And here's the thing about medical device barcode scanners. They're usually set for a prefix, which is characters that are before the scan. So if I scan the number 1125, the prefix might be a star or a space. So it'll be space 1125 or star 1125. You can er erase all that garbage by doing a reset. And by doing that, you reset it to whatever the factory defaults are, okay? And there are so many options to go over. Carrier return is one of them. Carrier return is something that you wanna program because if I'm doing like an Excel spreadsheet and I scan something in, I want it to immediately go to the next cell because that's how you do an inventory, right? Is you scan, it hits enter, drops you down the next cell in your spreadsheet, scan, 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 right? So that's called the carrier return. Now. The most common barcodes out there that you're going to encounter are going to be what your code 128 and your code 39s, but that is not all of them, especially for medical consumables. If you have some consumables and your barcode scanner that's on your medical di device, it's not picking up a certain type of barcode. Well, we can program it to accept it. Okay. There's not too many people that make barcode scanners. The actual cell inside that does the registration of the barcode, there's only a couple of them. And Honeywell is one of the major manufacturers of that. So even though it might be a different brand of barcode scanner, if you open it up and you read the chip, it probably says Honeywell inside it. That or one of the other two or three major vendors. So even though this might not have a programming library for it, we can use a programming library for a similar make and model and it will almost always work. So guys, the reason that you want to find your programming library is because you can set up your, your codes to register in your spreadsheet or in your CMMS program exactly how you want them. So if there's a prefix of a dash or a suffix of a dash or a suffix of a space or a prefix of a space, uh, there's all sorts of things that, that go into how you're going to read your barcodes. You can set that up with this. So go out, look at barcode programming, and you can download a whole bunch. There are hundreds, if not thousands of these out there. And they always have almost the same exact codes, like factory defaults. So I could do that. I can do pairing. So if you have a wireless one, like this guy here, you can actually scan a code to do pairing. Here you can see, this is one of the latest ones. This is a barcode scanner that I got off Amazon and these guys are absolutely awesome. This is my favorite barcode scanner. It can do Bluetooth, so I don't need the little key fob or I can do the key fob, which you plug it into your USB port, but that takes one of your USB ports, right? I don't like that. I can do Bluetooth and I can hook this guy up to my phone. I can hook it up to my laptop. I can hook it up to my computer and you can do that by activating Bluetooth. And you can see right on the card right here, this barcode scanner, it's not very expensive. I think it's like $50. Don't quote me on that. It's got to be really close to that. I'm going to leave a link to this in the description below. This is my favorite scanner. And it's also got the latest technology because this guy, look when I pull the trigger, you see how it's all lit up. So this one here is crossed between a uh, CCD and a camera based. Okay. So this one has like a camera. You can see the light field and how it's really light. Not only does that help you if you're looking around a dark area, which is kind of nice, but it also helps you um, with colored QR codes, which some things have that. So if you're in a dark area, like inside a uh, equipment cabinet or something like that, and you're scanning barcodes to do an inventory, having that light on there like that is so nice, guys. 
but that light is also for the camera to pick up different types of QR codes, okay? So when I want to use this guy, it comes with this little card. I can activate Bluetooth. Boop. That turns it into Bluetooth pairing mode. And if I want to disconnect the device, I scan the other code. It comes with this cool little card. Again, this one right here, I'm going to leave a link in the description below. This is my favorite barcode scanner because this has the latest and greatest technology inside it. It can scan every type of barcode that I can think of. I didn't even have to program it when I got it. It just started working with my spreadsheets instantly. And the range on this guy is fantastic. I can get like 30, 40 feet away, maybe even longer. And if you get too far away and it loses connection, you can continue scanning. And when you come back into Bluetooth range and it repairs, it will upload all the data that it scanned. Boop, 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 boop. It just uploads it to your spreadsheet and you press on. It's so fantastic. Battery life on this guy is really, really good. Um, I have scanned all day long with this thing, and I I don't know how much battery life it's got left, but it has never given me a low battery error or anything. So if I can scan for eight hours a day with that guy, you're good. It actually comes with a uh, USB cable that allows you to either use it as a tethered device or you can use it as a charger. And in the base is a slot for your dongle, which is going to be your USB dongle. I think I have one on my laptop. It's going to be very similar to this guy right here, this little Logitech one. No need to use it, right? Bluetooth. You can actually do inventory with these guys to your cell phone. And I can't tell you how fantastic that is. So guys, that is a generic breakdown of barcode scanners. They are going to make your life so wonderful. There are particularly some scanners for like Welsh Allens and GE and some other, some other manufacturers. And... Right off the bat, they will not scan your uh, asset IDs and stuff like that because they have a certain programming. So what you're going to do is download the programming library for a Honeywell or whatever and just go through. And, and one of the first things you do is reset the factory default. And then you want to do things like carry return, keyboard mode. Okay. Now, barcode scanners act as a USB keyboard. Okay. So it scans something, it registers it as like keystrokes, and it pops it over on your computer as keystrokes. So you want to enable like USA keyboard mode. Boop. See, it knows that that's not the programming for this particular one. It does not like it, but that's okay because I don't have to program it. This guy has been perfect right out of the box. But guys, there are so many options that you can set up for your barcode scanner. Just get the programming library for it, experiment with it, and you can take barcode scanners that people thought were broken, non-functional, whatever, and you can actually do a factory reset and bring them back to life and get them working again, okay? So, not the most exciting topic, but let me tell you something. Barcode scanners can be very inexpensive at $50, or we have some for like Cerner and Epic and stuff. Some of those barcode scanners can be like a thousand dollars okay and why go through the hassle of replacing the stupid thing if all you got to do is reprogram it and experiment okay especially with the pairing and unpairing for the wireless ones get the programming library for it and go ahead and go forth and fix your barcode scanners okay <laughs> anyway guys thanks for watching i know that this one's a little drawn out considering it's just about barcode scanners but i promise you if you use a barcode scanner throughout your day when you are doing CMMS or inventory, it's going to make your life so much better than typing that all out. Plus, it eliminates user error, okay? User error is the number one reason why inventories are wrong in the first place. So eliminate that by getting yourself a good barcode scanner. If you guys want to go forth and uh, do an inventory or if you want to do PM sweeps, there are preloaded spreadsheets that you can use that interface so nicely with barcode scanner and they will make your life so much better. And I will go ahead and include that in the link in the description below too, so that you can experiment with one of my macro enabled spreadsheets and take a look, see how you like it. Anyway, thanks for watching guys. That's what I got for you on barcode scanners. Seems simple, but they can actually be pretty complex. Thanks for watching.